Functions are a very convenient part of mathematics that help us express relationships between different variables. For example, we may be interested in a particular relationship between price and quantity. Suppose we were given the following function between quantity, which we will denote as Q, and price, which we will denote as P. Q equals 4000 minus 100 P. What does this function tell us about this relationship? First, it allows us to find particular solutions. For example, if we let price equal 5, we can solve for quantity. Q equals 4,000 minus 100, and we just plug in 5 for P. And now we can solve for what the quantity is at a price of 5, which is 3,500. So a particular solution of this function is a price of 5 and a quantity of 3,500. Finding particular solutions is useful but the real power of functions lies in the fact that in the original function, both price and quantity are variables. That is, they have no fixed value. Q equals 4,000 minus 100P. And we can see here that both quantity and price are left as arbitrary variables. They don't have a fixed value. Because of this, a function tells us what the relationship is between price and quantity over all their possible values. Notice that in addition to variables, our function also has constants. These are values that are fixed. In our example, 4000 and minus 100 are constants. It is very helpful to have labels for the variables in our functions. The way we label our variables is based on which one influences the other. It is standard to let the variable on the right hand side of the equation be the one that influences the variable on the left hand side of the equation. In our example, Q equals 4000 minus 100P, we would say that price influences quantity, since price is on the right-hand side and quantity is on the left-hand side. Another way to put this is to say that quantity depends on price. For this reason, we call the variable on the left-hand side the dependent variable, which in our example is quantity, and the variable on the right-hand side the independent variable, which is price in our example. Since the dependent variable depends on the independent variable, we say that the dependent variable is a function of the independent variable. We can use functional notation to make it easy to identify which variables are dependent and which are independent. In our example, quantity was a function of price. Functional notation would represent this in the following way. We would just write Q equals F of P or Q, quantity, is a function of P, price. From this alone, we can identify Q as the dependent variable and P as the independent variable. An even shorter way that we will occasionally see is just Q of P. These mean exactly the same thing. Up to this point, we've been talking about functions with one dependent variable and one independent variable. There are some functions, however, that have many variables. For example, quantity may depend on not only price, but also on income, which we will denote m, as in the following function, q equals 4000 minus 100p plus 50m. If a function has more than two variables, only one will be the dependent variable, and the others will be the independent variables. The notational difference is pretty simple. Since quantity depends on price as well as income, we write Q is a function of P, price, and M, income. This is the end of the functional notation review.